Milia or Milian cysts are small epidermoid cysts which contain keratin. They occur in multiples and are very common. They can occur in individuals of all ages and both sexes. These cysts are harmless and they're seen as small pearly white papules. It's commonly noticed in infants. They often tend to disappear on their own after a few weeks. In adults, they're also present, but they may persist for a longer period of time. Here are the clinical presentations of milia. So they're about one to two millimeters in size. They have a pearly white or slightly yellow color. They most commonly occur on the face, the cheeks, the eyelids, and the forehead. There are six clinical types of milia. The first type is the primary milia. They're found on the face, especially around the eyelids, cheeks, the forehead, and the genitalia. They may clear in a few weeks or they may persist for months or longer. Secondary milia is the second clinical type of milia we're going to talk about today. They usually present following the blistering process or after superficial ulceration from, from trauma, burns, or cosmetic procedures. The third clinical type of milia is milia and plaque. This is where you have multiple milia with an arithmetous edematous plaque and it especially occurs in middle-aged women. It often occurs in the post-auricular area, so it's kind of around the ears, but it can also occur at the eyelid, the cheeks or the jaw. Here's what the clinical presentation of milia and plaque looks like. Neonatal milia, this is the fourth clinical type of milia. It affects around 50% of newborns. You can either see a few of them or a larger amount kind of spread in a particular area. Often you can see it on the nose, but it can also be inside the mouth near the gums in the form of Epstein pearls. And neonatal milia tend to resolve on their own within about four weeks. The fifth type is juvenile milia. Now, this is where the patient has a persistent widespread a uh, form of the milia, it could be congenital or it could appear later on in life. And it's associated with some diseases like rhombo, basal cell navus, and other genetic disorders and syndromes. The sixth clinical type of milia is called multiple eruptive milia. And this is where crops of numerous milia appear over a few weeks to a few months. They can sometimes be itchy lesions or they may be asymptomatic. They most often occur on the face, the upper arms, or the trunk. Now, as we've said, milia tend to clear up spontaneously on their own, but it can last a few weeks to a few months. Some people have a cosmetic concern when they get milia developing, so, so you can arrange the removal of them for cosmetic reasons. One way to help milia is by applying some medicine to affected areas. So topical retinoids are very good. Uh, it can help to reduce the number of milia and it can also help making removing them easier. In the specific case of milia and plaque, the medicine minocycline can help with reducing those numbers. The most common way to remove milia is through the surgical technique. So what happens is the milia are de-roofed and what you have to do is do a small incision over the epidermis of the uh, milium, and you can do that with a scalpel or a needle. And then what you have to do then is just kind of express the uh, milium so the contents kind of come out. And you can use a comedo extractor to help that process. Uh, other ways to uh, remove a milia could also be through um, curatage or cryotherapy and sometimes lasers or electro desiccation may also be used. So if you've made it to the end of the video, leave a 100 emoji in the comment section below. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to get back to you and make sure you like and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you would like to see more videos like this.